we're going to talk about uh, characterization of aspirin using NMR spectroscopy. So if you remember from the lab, we synthesized aspirin from salicylic acid and acetic anhydride shown here. And we use sulfuric acid as a catalyst. Just to go through the mechanism, you see we started with acetic anhydride. That gets protonated. You do proton transfer with the acid. And then that protonated acetic anhydride is now activated to react with salicylic acid. And it's the hydroxyl group on the aromatic ring that attacks acetic anhydride. So I'm going to show those arrows there. So you see that nucleophilic attack on the acetic anhydride. You form an intermediate, uh, tetrahedral intermediate here, right? And then you have proton transfer from the conjugate base of sulfuric acid and the uh, hydroxyl proton from salicylic acid right and so now after that uh, you have you still have an intermediate here and but we need to get rid of uh the ester part here all right so we want to get rid of that so the way we do that is to do an elimination and so you reform the co pi bond and then you, you break the CO sigma bond that's shown here. And that's going to eliminate off an, an acetate anion. And then we'll get our product. So our acetate anion is here. Our product is here. And then the final step is the simple proton transfer between the acetate anion and the uh, protonated uh, acetyl proton. Right? So now we got salicylic acetyl salicylic acid, which is aspirin, and acetic acid. All right, so how do we know what we made? How do we know that? All right? There's several ways to characterize a compound. You can use the melting point. And if you use the melting point, every compound that's ever been synthesized, if it's a solid, it's probably got a melting point recorded somewhere. So on the handout, I want you to look up the melting point for pure aspirin and you're going to put it into the answer column where it asks for pure aspirin on the handout that's in Blackboard. Also, uh, you can test the purity of the aspirin, right? One of the tests that we use is iron chloride. Now, we didn't get a chance to do that, but on the handout, it's going to ask you about the minimum amount of salicylic acid allowed in a pure uh, commercial aspirin sample. So you can look that up and I actually put a link in the handout for you to click on to another video that goes through all this information. So you'll be able to find that information with no problem. And then the other the other way you can figure out uh, or characterize a compound is through thin layer chromatography or TLC. I want you to look up the RF value for aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid. That's a known value. You should be able to find that uh, simply through uh, using Google. Or you can use uh, Kim Spider. And Kim Spider will probably have the RF value uh, listed. All right, so what we're going to talk about here is NMR or nuclear magnetic resonance. Uh, and NMR, what NMR does is it is a, a technique that takes advantage of the uh, pre-existing magnetic field in the nucleus of an atom. In our case, we're doing proton NMR, and so the nucleus of the hydrogen atom is what we're going to be looking at. All right, so NMR tells us the carbon-hydrogen framework of a given molecule. Every NMR spectrum is uh, has a scale from 0 to 10, and we're, that's where all any of your signals are going to show up. And we call that the chemical shift. The number where the, the signal shows up, we call it the chemical shift. Every NMR spectrum uses uh, tetramethylsilane, which has a chemical shift of zero. You use TMS to calibrate uh, the rest of your chemical shifts. Right? So the NMR instrument looks like this. Uh, we have a 400 megahertz uh, available to us. And so what we would do is, if you look at this little glass tube here, we'll take the glass tube and, and, and put a sample of our aspirin in it, a crude aspirin, because normally what you want to do when you run a reaction is you want to take a, a sample of the crude and then you want to take a sample of the pure compound after you purified it. 
So we would take a sample, dissolve it up in a deuterated solvent, like deuterated chloroform, and then we insert it into the magnet and pulse it with radio frequency energy. So let me show you how that works. So the theory is behind NMR is that every hydrogen nucleus has its own magnetic field and every uh, hydrogen nuclei precesses randomly, right? So you can't control the spin. But when you take a sample and put it into a, a, ma a external magnetic field like an NMR magnet, because that's what that is, it's a giant superconducting magnet, you put your sample in, some of those spins that were random are now going to line up with the direction of the magnetic field in the instrument. And so this is a really crude approximation of what happens, but you place your sample into the magnetic field, you pulse your sample with RF radiation, and then the samples that were lined up against the field get brought into resonance. So all of your spins line up together. Right. And in between pulses of radiation, those spins relax back. OK, so here we have the random spins. We're going to put it into the magnetic field. Some of the random spins line up with the field. You can see the field is going this direction. And then the uh, spins of your nuclei, some of them are going the same direction as the field. Some going opposite. So you pulse it with the radiation to force the spins that were going opposite to go with the field. Right, and you can see that here. And then in between pulses, the ones that were going opposite will relax back. And when they do, they give off energy. And that's what's picked up by the NMR detector. Normally, a, an NMR, proton NMR is 16 pulses. So after you've done your uh, scans, you end up with a something that looks like this. It's called a free induction decay. But we can't read that. So we have to do is call a Fourier transform. And that takes the FID and turns it into a readable spectrum. Right. So this is the spectrum for crude aspirin. Right. So what this is salicylic acid here. This is acetyl salicylic acid on the other side. And so what we're looking for in the NMR would be protons. Right. Hydrogens. And so. If we look at the salicylic acid, the protons that are on the ring, they're going to show up in a specific region. Those are what we call aromatic protons. So those aromatic protons are going to show up in a specific region somewhere between about uh, seven and about eight and a half parts per million. And then you have your carboxylic acid proton that's shown here. And then the OH proton, sometimes depending on the resolution of your instrument, you can see it. Sometimes you can't. All right. So now we look at uh, aspirin or acetyl salicylic acid. You see, first of all, the OH that was here has now been esterified. So now that's an ester, right? And so the hydrogens that we're going to see for acetyl salicylic acid are going to be a little bit different. You're still going to have those aromatic protons, but then you're also going to be able to see the CH3 that's shown down here. Now, that CH3 uh, in the NMR spectrum is going to show up somewhere between 2 and 3. And that is really the key to determine whether or not you made aspirin. In the crude product, right, there won't be uh, any acetic anhydride left because most of that is going to be evaporated off. And we filtered it as well. But that CH3, uh, those protons right there, they're going to show up in the NMR spectrum. So you're going to see the aromatic protons. And then the way, you tell, the way that you can tell these two apart is that you'll see that CH, that uh, acetyl uh, CH3 grow into the NMR spectrum. All right, so let's look at some chemical shifts. Here you can see uh, from 2 to 3. That is uh, where, you, where you expect to see those acetyl uh, protons, right? Because that carbon is next door to a carbonyl, right? Just like right here, the carbon with the CH3s on it is next door to a carbonyl. So you expect to see that show up somewhere between two and three, those protons. And then your aromatics, again, six and a half to eight. You expect those to show up on the spectrum like that. So let's look at the, the, the crude 
So let's look at the crude spectrum. So again, this is the crude spectrum. And when you look at the spectrum, we're going to have to zoom in to see some of the peaks that we're looking for. All right. So you can see out here at about 10.5, right, you can see the carboxylic acid proton, right? That's that tall proton out there about 10.5. This is the crude product. So you expect to see some salicylic acid left over, right? And then what you also are looking at, look at the aromatic sections. You can see that you have several signals down here in the aromatic section, all right? So that's good. We're going to figure out which ones are which shortly. And then here, that's the proton that you're looking for to see if you are sterified uh, that alcohol on salicylic acid. That's the, that's the proton, that's the signal at about 2.37 that signal is the signal for the the acetyl protons the other signal at 2.2 we disregard that that was just some leftover acetone in the nmr tube all right so this is salicylic acid by itself right so you can see about 10.5 you see the uh carboxylic acid proton uh the oh is not showing up but the aromatic protons are definitely showing up between seven and eight and again out down here at two disregard that that's leftover acetone so here's a zoom of that section and it's the zoom a zoom of the aromatic section and then this is the pure aspirin right you see the aromatics the for some reason the uh carboxylic acid proton doesn't show up in the pure sample that doesn't mean it's not there but it's just it's not showing up but what you do see is the aromatics and you see the peak down here at about 2.3 that's showing up uh to represent your ch3 your acetyl protons right so here's a zoom of the aromatic section here's a a, a, a further zoom of the aromatic section and you notice you see four signals and that's because you have four aromatic protons on that ring, right? You got four aromatic protons on that ring. There's six carbons. Two of them have functional groups. The other four have hydrogens. And so those hydrogens are what's showing up on, on in this uh, aromatic section. The, the peak at 7.25 is my solvent peak. And that particular peak, uh, we, don't, we don't consider that when we're thinking about the uh, overall spectrum. It's just, that's that's where the solvent shows up. All right, and then again, you can see at 2.37, you can see that peak, and then you see the acetone peak down here at 2.2, we disregard that. All right, so here's the overlay. The top is the uh, salicylic acid, right? The middle spectrum, the blue spectrum, is the crude, and then and the lower spectrum that's the pure aspirin and you can see the difference in the salicylic acid you can see how they if you look at the crude and the salicylic acid you can see that these peaks match up here here and here and then if you look at the crude and the pure you can see where your pure aspirin aromatic peaks show up here 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 and here all right and then that's just a further zoom of that but you should be able to look at that and tell the crude from the pure if you know what salicylic acid looks like, what the crude looks like. You can actually, you know, by process of elimination, subtract out the crude, subtract out the salicylic acid from the crude and then compare it to the pure to see what you have. All right. So with that being said, we're going to stop here and I'm going to let you work on those questions. Every question that's on that handout was answered either in this video or in the link to the other video in the handout. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email. Thanks.